Hey, welcome to the Linux channel. So just recently I shot a, a video episode on uh, Linux uh, kernels, uh, file system, subsystem, uh, uh, virtual file system. Especially this video is all about uh, the role of uh, virtual file system uh, in a scenario like a Linux operating system or any Unix like operating system because the main important role of VFS is to abstract the entire uh, underneath the uh, file system types uh, specific file system types let it be ext4 or uh, uh, something like non-native file system types like uh, ms-dos uh, fat file system ntfs file system so this is something extensively i discussed and this is also something i was discussing with my student then i thought let me shoot a video episode so <clears throat> this is what i have discussed as a part of uh, third episode of uh, Linux kernel uh, file system subsystem as you can see here. So below that I added a few references and few architectural diagrams. So I highly recommend before uh, uh, you know continuing watching this video you can uh, generally have a look in case if you are new to uh, you know file system uh, as well as kernel uh, development and stuff like that so you can just go through the same because i have also covered about some intro and stuff like that and before that i discussed about a few uh, constructs uh, in uh, linux kernel uh, you can see here the first episode i have discussed about uh, a few uh, important apis and as well as data structures uh, like uh, register file system unregistered file system and uh, stuff like that you can see here in the second episode i have discussed about uh, fsi nodes uh, and um, you have this uh, uh, as an example i discussed about uh, any file system uh, specific inode.c file so the same you can go through so in this episode uh, what i did is uh, i did uh, uh, some uh, trace uh, usually i discuss about uh, linux kernels uh, uh, source directly via online linux kernel source so this time i thought let me insert some trace points and then we can see live what is happening uh, uh, which is corresponds to anything you do in this system so what I did is I uh, created the, the kernel source I got the kernel source uh, through Ubuntu and then um, I customized and uh, I inserted a few uh, debug uh, print messages so let me just take you guys over there uh, yeah you can see here in this you have this uh, kernel build folder and once it is compiled it has produced this uh, dev file so I kept the name as a uh, uh, TLC trace so that uh, it can be used uh, to distinguish uh, which kernel it is booted so if I do uname minus r you can see here this is not ubuntu kernel this is a ubuntu kernel uh, source with you know certain uh, debug messages uh, put inside so so this is what i have done so where i have inserted the debug messages is inside uh, your linux fs and then uh, you have this uh, file name i.c in this there are specific apis that corresponds to vfs operations so, so these apis it is good to start with and then get a hang uh, besides you going through various uh, data structures and stuff like that so if you see here if you uh, if i search tlc so i just use this keyword so that it is easy to you know search usually i do that anytime i do any debug messages please understand i am not a big fan of any extensive debugging uh, uh, tools or something i do extensively use uh, in kernel space print case in user space print is that's about it so i don't generally like any uh, you know complicated debugging tools with this itself you can have a lot of learning curve and also you can sometimes uh, debug your code as well so it all depends how do you uh, write the code with certain principles and uh, certain logic so so you can search this keyword you can see here i inserted in this api <coughs> vfs mk node has the name itself says that api name itself says uh, it's a uh, api which uh, you know uh, uh, associated with the mk node uh, operation uh, of that you know vfs abstraction so next i have inserted in uh, mkdir you can see here vfs mkdir and then you have this another uh, api like vfs rename so you have some uh, documentation for few of these apis so like that you can find the uh, various uh, apis uh, over here uh, which corresponds to that uh, 
you know vfs uh, file system abstraction again i'm saying if you are not uh, sure about vfs i strictly recommend you to watch that previous episode because i have even done some kind of a demo with the fat file system so that we can compare how it is different with native file system like ext4 or something and how vfs abstracts and how it fools uh, to the user space application so that it gives that unified uh, look and feel no matter which file system you access so if you go here i inserted these uh, trace points uh, it is quite intuitive it is nothing much more than that so i have compared the same and uh, i have booted as i said earlier so what we can do is we can do uh, uh, we can uh, uh, you know uh, tail minus f where log messages so we can uh, where log kernel messages so we can trace a uh, log messages so this is something happening in the background maybe somewhere uh, some temporary file something it is happening in the background so let us ignore the same so let us see as we do something uh, uh, an operation how it uh, does uh, in in the background and how it invokes this apis so we can do this way or else uh, we can uh, create a new tab so that it is easy to you know let me keep two tabs open simultaneously yeah this is one tab and we can open another tab so that we can watch the action live so we can go here <coughs> cd code temp so there are some few files and folders ls minus f so there is a folder uh, test and then besides uh, I mean there is mkdar test2 so if i do the folder <coughs> please note uh, we uh, we have just uh, flushed out so from this point onwards we can see what is happening uh, in the background so let me do an mkdir test2 uh, yeah since uh, the folder exists let me create a folder called test3 so you can see here as soon as i invoke this uh, operation in the user space uh, it has uh, reached that api and this tells uh, you know um, as a part of pfs abstraction that particular api is responsible uh, whenever you do any uh, you know folder creation and similarly since i inserted in uh, uh, you know uh, rename uh, we can even do that rename operation mv test3 to test4 and you can see here as soon as i did the same it has invoked that vfs rename so unfortunately i must have done uh, one more thing is i must have printed that uh, folder name over there uh, along with uh, you know kernel log message i must have uh, printed the folder name so that it even more uh, specifically pinpoints any file or folder whichever that operation is happening we can see live uh, exactly what it corresponds to so apart from that uh, we can try some kind of um, mk node operation we can just do a test uh, operation so that uh, uh, you know we are not doing anything much serious so we just do a simple mk node uh, sudo mk node uh, dev test 556 something like that and uh, we say it is a character device and uh, we give something random we see what happens yeah so you can see here uh, as soon as uh, it has been triggered once again we got that uh, you know debug message so this uh, you know really confirms uh, whenever you have to go through uh, the vfs uh, file system uh, some of the most important uh, apis are over there so let us go back to the source code you have this apis you can go through the same and then you can see the connections uh, from this api how these apis are linking to that uh, native file system type how that registration is done so something uh, in the upcoming videos i may discuss about the same down the line so i recommend uh, than you going through the kernel source so this way obviously you can go through online kernel source like i do in most of the video episodes so if you go back quickly to the online kernel source you can go to this uh, file fs name i so you can go here and uh, besides so whatever apis i discussed you can find even more interesting apis uh, let us just go here yeah you can have uh, this vfs uh, create vfs mk obs you can see there and uh, let me just do vfs underscore and uh, we kind of see 
various other APIs which have not, you know, put forward those debug messages because I don't want to, my intention is I don't want to flood this uh, screen end of the day with a lot of debug messages. So that's why I have not put for all the APIs. I was a bit conservative about the same. So uh, let us search if any interesting APIs. Yeah, you can see here VFS path lookup and uh, uh, VFS create and then uh, VFS MK obj yeah MK node and one more interesting thing is sometimes we need to kind of uh, trace um, uh, you know some of these uh, data structures as well so I may do that in upcoming episodes this is uh, something I just did that entry point so that it gives some kind of place to start rather than always uh, going through uh, very deep inside that code base <laughs> so yeah mkdir and this is where I have done and uh, apart from that you have uh, uh, RM dir, yeah, even uh, this we can insert, of course, anytime if you remove a directory, it may get, it get triggered. Uh, you have this link and link, and uh, mm, yeah, this symbolic links. So even this, uh, whenever you create a symbolic link, uh, this may get triggered. And uh, rename yes 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 and uh, and uh, yeah read link yeah so you can find as you can see here there are various APIs that corresponds to that uh, you know um, VFS file system abstraction so down the lane uh, as I said uh, the upcoming episode I would like to do some kind of trace where we can trace this path you know. Um, if you go to this architectural diagram you have this vfs and uh, underneath the vfs you have that native file system itself it may be ext4 and uh, uh, fat file system or anything so whenever you do any file operation we need to trace uh, next as it does this rename in vfs we need to trace the native file system also should trigger so it should happen two times once in vfs as a part of abstraction the second time it should happen really in the native file system so this gives even more uh, uh, big picture and uh, we can do that with a couple of file systems one in uh, fat one in uh, ext4 so that if you do any rename operation in uh, hard drive with ext4 partition it shows the debug message and once you do in a memory card or usb drive uh, formatted in uh, you know fat file system then it shows that debug message so we can play around with these options so sometimes uh, in the upcoming episode i may cover about the same and uh, as well as i'm going to cover a couple of uh, data structures uh, which are associated with this uh, uh, vfs uh, uh, file system as well so with this uh, i would like to conclude this uh, episode hope you guys loved watching this video if you have anything to discuss or if you want to share anything, be in touch via mail. Thanks a lot for joining me. Until then, stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.